Welcome to the Pro Health IQ Podcast with Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis, where you will learn about natural solutions to common ailments. And now, here are your hosts, Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis. We're so excited you have joined us today for our show called Yes, It Is Probably Your Thyroid. So many questions have come in about thyroid help and health and wondering if they have a thyroid problem. And since Dr. Lewis is the master of the thyroid because of his wonderful book, The Thyroid Sniper, uh, we're going to let him answer that today about, is it really my thyroid? So Dr. Lewis, could you explain to people what they might need to be looking for to figure out what's going on with their health. Well, I'm going to try to, but sometimes when your thyroid's sluggish, you have memory problems, so we'll see if we can get past that. Um, yeah, thanks for the plug on the book. It's short and sweet, and it's like I've had a lot of people say, you know, I really like that. I said, you know, I don't have two or 300 pages because every time I wanted to write a book, it's like I don't want to spend that much time away from Janet, so I kind of cut to the chase and thank goodness people from Oregon all the way down to Florida and Maine to Mississippi think it's a big deal. So thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thyroid's a pretty complicated thing and it's really and truly, uh, a lot of people call it the master gland, although really that comes out of the brain, the hypothalamus and pituitary, but there's so many interactions and biofeedback mechanisms that we have to consider the thyroid. And I hope after I've explained this that it kind of makes sense to you. Um, <clears throat> for the most part, it's hypothyroidism. That means less function uh, as opposed to normal. And some doctors think it's strictly an iodine deficiency. I don't think it's that simple, but sometimes given iodine, which we'll talk more about, uh, can help, but I don't think it's that simple. Well, most people. And how many people say, oh, my God, but I can't lose weight? And if you look around America, it's certainly changed uh, how many people have gained uh, excessive weight. And we do have a new thing coming out any any moment uh, <laughs> uh, that's going to help with weight loss. And we'll get to that here in a week or two, I think. Uh, so... You know, beyond the thyroid, I've read a lot of different estimates about uh, what kind of uh, percentage people think there is that have less than optimal thyroid function. And I've read 30 to 40 percent. I've read as low as 10 percent. I'm not sure I believe that. Um, the problem with diagnosing, uh, even for, say, the endocrinologist, that that's all they do is specialize in it is some of these symptoms will overlap and can be symptoms of many, many, many different conditions. But some of the things that can go with a thyroid issue can be infertility. And there's more and more of that going on. Uh, gum disease, eczema, psoriasis, you know, skin conditions and rashes. We have people that put on their health survey, well, I have an unexplained rash. Yeah, it could be thyroid and it could be a lot of other things. Uh a lot of irritable bowel syndrome uh, type GI problems. And, and the biggest issue I see there is some people don't stick with it long enough or they make a crazy correlation. They say, well, I, I took your stuff and got worse. Uh, you got worse before you zone the stuff. So the main thing, the people that win are the ones that kind of stick with it and have patience and faith because there's going to be ups and downs. I tell people there are going to be good days and bad days whether you're doing something or not. So you just have to have to have the faith, I think, to go through the bad days because I think that is uh, just testing our faith and testing our patience. We all have good days and bad days. <clears throat> Even though Janet takes massive amounts of supplements and she's drop dead gorgeous and full of joy and light and all that kind of stuff, she still has some bad days. So, uh, I know not of what he speaks. Every day is a great day for me. <laughs> <laughs> It has been a little trying with the new uh, or everything we've been implementing. And thank you all for holding in there with the new website. It is up and running now. ProHealthIQ.com is uh, our new site. Um, people that are listening to this that have already been our patients, they are already in our new site. They just have to change their password. And those of you that want to be patients or just want to look around, um, you do need to... Uh, 
make sure you let us know you're looking around because we need to upgrade you in order to see all the products because we have some really great products. We had good products before and we have some really awesome products now. So uh, we're quite excited about our extensive line. And that could be what Dr. Lewis is talking about as far as uh, I might have gotten a little tired getting that all together. But Well, she's been overworked. And uh, I think we covered a lot of uh, uh, that on the last podcast when we talked about memory. I thought I was being cute. So, you know, my memory's so bad I could uh, plan my own surprise party. But some of that is just stress, which goes into blowing your adrenal glands and high cortisol, which adversely affects your thyroid. So I think Janet's holding in there very, very nicely considered the stress. And we all have that. So, Well, you know, you know the reason why I'm doing well is because I take a product called Thyrotane. And it really does help the uh, thyroid and give me energy, which I've needed for the last few weeks. So, um, well, Can I go over the ingredients? Oh, sure, bit? sure. <clears throat> well, you know, it's got some of the A, C, and E. Uh, it's that's good, but it's got the zinc, but it's the higher class zinc tracks, uh, which is the more absorbable, and then a very high class selenium, uh, and that's really, really good. But then it's got N acetylcysteine or NAC, and that helps create glutathione and helps the liver detox. And it's got tyrosine. If you knew what tyrosine did, almost everybody would be taking tyrosine. That's an amino acid which helps with a couple of the neurotransmitters that makes you feel the peace of God or makes many people feel the peace of God. There are men out there that don't have a clue how much of that is stirred up in their coffee before their wife gives them the morning coffee. Then it's got something called ashwagandha root, and that is a major, major adaptogen. It helps you adapt to stress. It's really good. Then it's got Google resin, which is good for all that kind of stuff. But did you know Google actually has been known to lower cholesterol? And then turmeric, and I've read reports about turmeric being like, oh, my God, much more uh, important and much more valuable than some of the drugs. And I'm not an anti-drug doctor, you know, even being a chiropractor, I love our medical profession, have the greatest respect for them. And there's more and more people that are recognizing that if you balance what you're doing medically with something that's complementary, which is the nutrients uh, that works real well. And yeah, that thyrotain is like a brand new step up and kick butt, if you'll pardon me for saying that. Um, You know, there's different parts of the thyroid, you know, and so many people give me their lab work and all they have is a TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Well, that's just the signal from the pituitary in the brain. That doesn't mean it's not a good indicator of what the thyroid's doing with it. Why don't you explain a little bit about what we do with the lab when when you're, you're talking about TSH? What is it that you're looking for differently? Because many uh, potential clients call up and want to know, well, what's on the lab panels that we run? And in case you don't know what we do, we run a low-cost lab throughout the United States so that we're not guessing at what you need nutritionally. So uh, when we run a thyroid panel, Dr. Lewis is looking for a very specific thing. So what uh, markers are you running exactly? Well, the one that is the ace of spades, so to speak, uh, the one that trumps them all is the free T3 or triiodothyronine uh, because it has to be in optimal range. And when I say optimal, that's like you're going down interstate, the speed limit's 75, uh, and you're going 45. That's hypothyroidism. You're going down the road, but you're going to get run over, uh, pushed off the road, and you just don't have the get up and go that you think you should. Uh, so with nutrition, your body is better able to take that and function at a higher level. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we get a lot of women come in and say, well, I've lost a lot of my hair. It's getting really, really thin. And that can be your thyroid. It can also be poor digestion and poor protein digestion and uptake. Uh, there's a lot of things that can work with that. But we've got a lot of women that are just thrilled because their hair is a lot thicker than it used to be. Doesn't work so well on men as far as growing hair, but does pretty much on a woman. <clears throat> Sometimes somehow the men are better looking with no hair than women are, and I'm not know, know how that works. But you know that's what everybody asks is like, well, uh, I think she just called me ugly because I got a gorgeous head no, of hair. I'm just, so, yeah, I just, what's she saying, folks? Men can get by with it easier being bald headed than a woman. Because the women, you know, we love our hair. We need hair. And the men seem, it seems to be a, a sexy thing when they don't have any or oh, something. Sean Connery. 
Yeah, sexy. that kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sam Elliott, I don't think it looked good bald. But <laughs> there you go. Or Tom Selleck. Good point. Yeah, well, I guess whatever your taste in men. It's just, I haven't really seen a bald a woman. <laughs> I, I'm not, you know, that just doesn't seem to work for us as well. Uh, you know, one other thing that uh, we think about is sometimes it's an iodine deficiency uh, because we don't eat enough seafood and we don't have iodized salt. And I tell people don't eat salt unless it's, you know, the Celtic or Himalayan. We like the Himalayan because it's pink and it's pretty. Uh, but we really, as a society, don't get as much iodine. And that, that has to do with all kinds of other organs, not just the thyroid. And that's why Japan has a lot less uh, thyroid cancer and thyroid problems and breast cancer, et cetera, et cetera, because they eat a lot more seafood than we do. But you know, one of the other studies I read that uh, about 20% of the women have subclinical hypothyroidism, and that just means it's not really out of range, but it's not in optimal range. Well, one of my uh, typical responses is people say but it's in this reference range i said yeah this reference range represents the 400 pound people in walmart that we make fun of for dressing funny so if you want to be in that range that's fine and i don't mean to make fun of the walmart people but they're kind of funny uh look at them on the internet but that is a representation of what's common in america but not normal and janet and i've seen a little bit of europe and china and yeah, Americans are different, and it's not necessarily a good difference. Uh, so if you have an unexplained uh, weakness or lethargy, uh, you know, if you've been diagnosed with depression, but you don't have any major stress in your family that you're dealing with, you know, it could be your thyroid level. Have your doctor check the thyroid level. We do five parts of the thyroid unless things look really, really funny. And then we'll add what's called a TPO or thyroid peroxidase, which that is, you know, kind of chemistry beyond me, although I do know how to uh, throw things in, let your body work better. Uh, if you've had unexplained weight gain, but people start getting their thyroid functioning correctly and, and many, many, about half people lose weight and the other half don't. Well, folks, you've got to be realistic. And most people, believe it or not, are not realistic about how much they eat, what kind of junk they eat. Janet and I sinned over the weekend and we were in a German town and we ate all kinds of bakery goods and things with bread on it. And that was on They Friday. were so good too. Yeah. And yeah. we were hung over from Friday through Monday. But we, it, the day it was happening is like, man, we're, we're really handling this well. We feel, we still feel great. But we're then jacked up on sugar and yeah. our yeast says yeehaw, but it, the we next felt day, like heck later. Yeah, it's taken us like two days to get over it. It's, yeah. it's been horrible. <laughs> and I gained two pounds, which is not good. Uh, people that have dry, scaly skin, especially if you put lotions and moisturizers on, it doesn't really work. But as far as the weight gain, many, many people say, I'm doing what you tell me to do. Are you eating correctly? And people say, well, I'm, I'm drinking 18 pack a day. I was like, you can't do that. One person said, I have two pumpkin cream filled muffins, Chef Boyardee, hamburger and fries, and a Hershey bar for dessert. And oh, for a snack, I ate a can of chocolate frosting. And she was agitated at me because she wasn't losing weight. And she would, again, the next day have her two pumpkin cream filled muffins and Hershey bar, a big plug for Hershey's, I guess, and lots and lots of simple carbs, which is made out of wheat, which we'll get to in a minute, um, <clears throat> people that are sensitive to cold, uh, people that have a heavy and tired head. Now, you know, as a chiropractor, back when I practiced, you know, I adjusted a lot of people. They said, well, my head's so heavy and tired. I knew that was probably not a chiropractic issue. It was more likely a thyroid issue. Uh, if you don't feel like exercising, or if you exercise, it knocks you down for a couple of days. It's probably uh, or a very high likelihood of being a thyroid contributing to that. Um, <clears throat> and, and there's all kinds of weird things that can relate to uh, having a thyroid problem. MS, which we just got a health survey in from a lady that has MS, and it's like, wow. Uh, many, many autoimmune diseases, including lupus and rheumatoid, which we see a lot of. We see a lot of the Hashimoto's. Uh, we have some people 
that have the sarcoidosis and Sogren's syndrome. Uh, so there's a lot of different uh, autoimmune diseases, and we're seeing it in younger and younger and younger people because of our diet and some of the bad things that's in our environment and also can relate to elevated cholesterol levels. And, you know, whether you want to take a statin drug or not with your MD is fine. Uh, I tell people there are many, many different good books on cholesterol. And, you know, cholesterol can be a thyroid problem. It can be a copper problem. It can be a liver problem. It can be a GI problem. So don't think that cholesterol is the only thing that you kind of have to look that as one piece of the puzzle in the equation. Um Actually, on some lists, they say you're more likely to have a thyroid problem if you're left-handed, and I take exception to that since I'm left-handed. Uh, I have had uh, GI issues, as did my dad. Uh, uh, the main thing on that is just stick with it, and if you have a bad day or two, if this don't work, try that. And sooner or later, it, it takes a while, but your body can begin to heal itself if you remove the toxins and increase the nutrients. Your body has that wisdom uh, to work more efficiently. Um, we also look at T4. You know, we want it to be mid-range or higher. And even though that's not the active hormone, uh, you need it higher so it can be converted to the more active T3. And some of the things that people just don't understand is it's so multifaceted. You kind of have to jump in there, uh, and keep working on it. Uh, people that have AFib, and we have a lot of people says, well, I'm having AFib. Well, number one, go to a cardiologist. Have them check it out. Number two, if it's a nutritional issue, it's almost always magnesium or most likely magnesium. Or it can be some of those perchlorates, uh, you know, the, the toxins. It can be heavy metals, which we're all full of. Um but it can also be your thyroid. So you have to consider that's a possibility. Have your thyroid tested. We do, again, five points unless we think it's necessary to do more. Uh, some people test their basal body temperature, which is a pretty good thing to do, too. Um, if you have bumps, uh, nodules, a swelling around the throat, I think you should see a good endocrinologist, and you need to rule out cancer if you have pain in the neck or throat uh, and difficulty swallowing. And again, I saw that so many times as a chiropractor. And, you know, if it's a chiropractic issue, great, jump on it, go see a good chiropractor, but be aware there's other possibilities. Uh, hoarseness. People that, you know, especially women that get this deep, voice and they're not smokers you know smoking can cause that too uh sometimes the constant cough um, although i've seen a lot of drugs cause that too it's more likely to be a woman than a man but men can have this too it's more likely if you have a family history of it that's not necessarily genetics it may be just what you grew up eating incorrectly and goes back to that iodine deficiency uh, and that's very, very, very common. And the environment has a lot to do with it. And that's the overabundance of bromine, which can be in your bakery goods, like we ate over the weekend and still feel a little bit yucky from. Uh, it can be in your hot tub. The fluoride or chlorine, the fluoride's in your water, the chloride's in your swimming pool. And I had this discussion with a guy yesterday about, well, he swims three or four times a week, and he says, after I listened to your podcast, he said, I decided to quit absorbing all those chemicals and got out and did a detox, nutritional detox, and he says, I cannot believe how much better I think and how much more energy I have, and he thinks it's just the extra chemicals he was absorbing in the pool. Um, if you have leaky gut syndrome, that's a big issue because... Some people that write these books, and or now I'm one of them, but uh, think it's gluten. Some people think it's only gluten that causes these autoimmune uh, antibodies, uh, which can lead to Hashimoto's. I don't think it's quite that 100%, but it's certainly a big part of it. 
other types of food sensitivities, and there's many, many times it is a food sensitivity, but please always think, am I really allergic to that food, or is it the Roundup or glyphosate that they're spraying on that food? We're going to find out that is a big part of the problem, where we've been blaming gluten. It's not just gluten. It's the junk that they're spraying on it. Uh, And so when you have some GI issues and you're not really digesting like you should, if you don't digest, you get these partially digested food particles and they go down into your small intestine and then they're kind of absorbed into your bloodstream prematurely uh, because of the leaky gut. Uh, and your body kind of says, ooh, I don't know what that is, and I'm going to produce an antigen against them. And that's why some people have an overactive immune system or autoimmune disease. And then sometimes it settles in your thyroid, you get the Hashimoto's, and sometimes it does other things like lupus and rheumatoid. Uh, You can go to the specialist. You can always get your antibodies checked, the IgG and IgAs, to see you know, it kind of measures food sensitivities, and that's a good thing. Now, I get on a soapbox about this, and I've done it before, for those of you that's followed us for a few years. <clears throat> Soy is not a health food, and yes, I've read research that says it's great, grand, and glorious, and will make you young, rich, and good-looking, but they're lying. Soy is not good. You can... In the supplement industry, you can actually isolate some good things out of soy, but you should never, 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 never do soy by itself or consume soy protein. Now, if you get soy lecithin, that's okay, or phosphatidylcholine, that's okay, because they can isolate that and it doesn't bring with it the uh, phytoestrogens that are potentially harmful that mess with your breast or your prostate or your thyroid. I'm glad you addressed that because um, there's been patients that's bought some of our products and that says, well, Dr. Lewis says no soy, and this has uh, soy isolate in it. And that's what he's saying. It, um, it's just an isolate of the soy. It's not the actual soy itself. So thank you for clarifying that, that yeah. in a nutritional product that's a good nutritional product. Yeah, I mean, you can get good vitamin E out of soy, but it does have to be isolated. Not the don't Just don't do soy protein or don't sit around and eat those beans by themselves. And, you know, the we sell a lot of natto, which uh, lowers fibrinogen activity and helps lower your chance of heart attack and stroke uh, just because it, you have less chance of forming a clot. But that is fermented soy. It's okay once you ferment it. It's fine. Um, so, you know, there's there's a lot of studies that says it's a good thing. I personally think it's not. Uh, the bromine that I talked about earlier, it's it's also called endocrine disruptor. Notice the initial is ED. Folks, if you have ED, you're full of endocrine disruptors or estrogen mimickers or something called xenoestrogens, estrogen mimickers. Uh, <clears throat> but the bromine and the fluorine and the chlorine that I talked about, they are called halides, and that also goes into the re- receptor site where your thyroid's looking for iodine and it takes up room in that receptor site. And that can be that you're getting enough iodine, but the receptor sites are full of bromine if you're eating all those wheat products, which is, you know, the baked goods that have the bromine in it, <clears throat> the so-called dough conditioner. And again, it's the gluten in there that messes with your GI tract, so it's kind of a double whammy, so to speak, uh, when it displaces the iodine, and it can lead to more cancers, uh, breast cancer, thyroid, uh, ovary, and prostate. Um, unfortunately, some people learn that the hard way. And, you know, I had a call from a guy I really like uh, this morning from uh, Hot Springs, and he's a nurse up there. And uh, Janet and I love hot springs. Um, He said, but, you know, I don't want to spend too much. I said, I understand everybody has a different uh, parameter, and we kind of do this inexpensively. Actually, I don't know anybody that does it less expensively than we do, especially for the quality of supplements. And I said, but you're a nurse. How much is it costing these people that never invested in their health? 
two, three, five hundred thousand dollars these patients that you see? He says, Okay, Doc, I got your point. I give. Folks, it's an investment. It's like anything else. If you invest in taking care of your brand new car, it's gonna last you two or three times longer than if you don't invest and do the maintenance in it well your body's the same way it needs nutrition so do you have to do more than one bottle of whatever you get from us because that seems to be the other issue it's uh you know many people will start and they'll get a round of everything and then their next question is do i need to continue on this Uh, so janet's being a very sweet smart aleck there because we do get that question a lot And it's like, you can't get it out of your food. And I had this conversation yesterday with another man says, well, you know, I don't want to be a smart aleck here, but I want to get this out of my food. And I said, you hadn't read enough research. It does not exist. Now, there's some food that's more nutrient dense than others, but it's a crapshoot even in organic, which you're not getting the pesticides there. But you don't know how much manganese, molybdenum, magnesium, vitamin A, the B vitamins, which I hope I have time to talk about that because you have to have B vitamins to convert iodine. Um, You know, you've got to convert iodine and iodide. There's a lot of things. And again, I don't I try not to get too much into chemistry because I didn't like it, although I had to pass a lot of it. But, yes, you've got to stay on it. And then, you know, I'm kind of a. I try to make analogies where people can understand. I had this preacher, and he's the nicest man I've ever met. And he was in the office, although we do this over the phone and internet a lot. He says, Doc, uh, when can I stop this? I said, hey, when can people stop reading the Bible and listening to you preach and quit putting money in the offering plate? He says, okay, I got it. Continual efforts bring out continual blessings whether that's investing into nutrients into your body or whether it's into studying whether it's into learning to be more spiritual and more peaceful which i think we all need more than that um you know one of the things uh that i talk about is you know you've got pesticides plastics phthalates and fire retardants well most people don't understand Uh, They're called polybromodiphenyl ethers, which notice polybromo, that means many bromine or bromate molecules, and it's in plastics, it's in carpets, it's in your fabrics, a lot of the clothes that you wear. It's in your pillow and mattress, so every time you go to bed for a restful sleep, you're actually getting a big dose of things that are endocrine disruptors. Remember ED, folks, and and we we're getting kids in their twenties and thirties and forties that are having problems with that. And it's like, well, it's not always a lack of testosterone. Sometimes you're just clogged up with you know things you need to get out that's acting like estrogen, or raising your cholesterol and clogging up your arteries so you don't you know get blood where it needs to go. And that's a long term thing. The body heals. Slowly, It's not a quick, easy thing. Janet and I just uh, had our fourth grandbaby, and it took nine months. I mean, I don't care how beautiful she was. It took nine months to incubate, so yeah, it was worth the wait. So stress, uh, you know, people talk about stress. That's kind of an overused buzzword. What is stress? Well, stress can just be the chemicals you're in. Stress can be being in a German town and You know, having too much of their baked goods, we didn't drink their beer, but we did have their baked goods and sweet stuff. Uh, And when it becomes long term, then that adversely affects your adrenal glands, your cortisol goes high, and that just wreaks havoc all over your thyroid function. And it's like going down the highway at 130 miles an hour. Well, sooner or later, if you're lucky and don't hit anybody, the engine and transmission, something's going to blow. You're going to blow a tire or something. And that can cause a cascade, that the, the obesity that we talked about, the gut-related problems, high blood pressure, your cholesterol can go high. Um, so don't do stress. <clears throat> yeah, you got to get rid of the chemical stress. You've got to do the nutritional stuff. I think it's very important. To learn to be peaceful in a in a mental and spiritual level, I read something one time that it said, "Except but the joyous as truth." 
Anything else that's not joyous, you don't accept as truth. You don't accept at all. That's a good point. So if you guys are all confused and don't know what it is, if, if you have an iodine problem or a thyroid problem or... Well, lack of iodine lowers your IQ. So if you're confused about what I said, yeah, it's probably iodine and thyroid. Right. You know, the first step is to go to our website and fill out the health survey. And um, that way, Dr. Lewis can determine where to start getting help for you the fastest and easiest way. Um, There's no need to guess. That's what we do is take that out. So, um, you know, share us with other people, please, because there's, I'm sure, tons of people that you know that have an iodine or a thyroid problem and, and would enjoy listening to the show and learning about how to get well. So thank you again for listening to this week's show. And we'll be back with you with another exciting show next time on the Pro Health IQ podcast. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope in your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living. 